when you talk about um, covalent bonding versus ionic bonding, the attraction between the two atoms in one molecule, it could be via ionic bonding or covalent bonding. If we have ions like sodium chloride, sodium with positive charge, chloride with negative charge, is going to attract each other is electrostatic attraction but within one molecule so we have ionic bonding or covalent bonding covalent bonding it's the force or or the attraction that is there based on the sharing of electrons or attraction between the nuclear two nucleuses over shared electrons and uh, when you have ionic bonding is the the bond or the attraction between two opposite charges of the um, the ions with two opposite charges in intermolecular forces could you name a couple of intermolecular forces what are the different types london dispersions london dispersions it's the intermolecular forces, the type of intermolecular forces that exist among um, compounds with no polarity. They are basically nonpolar compounds. So London dispersions are kind of induced dipole moment. So it would, it the uh, the the polarity comes and goes based on disturptions, based on the the surface area that it's um, affecting each other. Um, so the movement of electrons um, in molecules that are nonpolar creates momentary polarity, and uh, that is going to cause that London dispersions. It's the weakest among the, the all different type of intermolecular forces but it exists in every type of molecule, but is the major one for uh, nonpolar compound because it's the only one. It's very weak, but that's the only one that uh, compounds with that nonpolar compounds they have. The trend or the increase, how does it increase? Which molecule, what type of molecule they have greater London dispersion? What are the factors that affect the strength of London dispersion forces? If you have two molecules, how would you know which one has greater London dispersion forces? Molecular weight, very good. If you have a compound that is has greater molecular uh, molar mass, larger the molecule, is going to have greater intermolecular forces of that type of London dispersions. And uh, also the shape of molecule. If you have molecule branched or complex structure, they have uh, less, so they're weaker intermolecular forces. If you have like a greater, uh, greater surface area for the molecule, is going to have greater um, attraction via the, that type of intermolecular forces. Okay. Um, next is you mentioned it up there. Hydrogen bonding. Hydrogen bonding is the strongest among the uh, non um, molecular compounds. So the molecule is not. The molecule is not ionic, but it has a strong attraction between the molecule because of the difference in electronegativity of the hydrogen and the element attached to it. There are three elements. What are those three elements that could in the molecule that could cause hydrogen bonding? If hydrogen is directly attached to nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine, um, it's uh, because of the, the difference in electronegativity between oxygen and hydrogen, or between nitrogen and hydrogen, or between fluorine and hydrogen, is going to give greater degree of charge to the hydrogen, 
And since the neighboring oxygen has pair of unshared electron or has negative charge, so the molecule is pretending to act like uh, ionic compound. So because of the difference in charges, because the attraction is always about electro, when you say electrostatic attraction, that means attraction between opposite charges. So the greater the value of that charge, the stronger the attraction is going to be. So you have the, um, that's what makes the molecule uh, more or stronger attract to, to another molecule. So hydrogen bonding, a strong intermolecular force. But if you have two molecules that have both of them, they have hydrogen bonding, which one is going to have a stronger hydrogen bonding? Any factors that could affect Any factors that would affect the molecules with the hydrogen bonding, the degree or the strength of the hydrogen bonding. Electronegativity of the element attached, uh, that hydrogen is attached. So oxygen versus nitrogen, OH versus NH, OH has higher or, or shows stronger hydrogen bonding because electronegativity of oxygen is greater than electronegativity of nitrogen, okay? Very good. And then number of possible hydrogen bond per molecule. So if you have ethylene glycol has two OH group, is going to show stronger hydrogen bonding compared to alcohol that has one OH group. Or if you have NH2, you have two hydrogen attached to one nitrogen, has greater hydrogen bonding compared to another amine that has just one NH. So number of hydrogen, uh, hydrogen bonding or possible hydrogen bonding per molecule also can, um, can affect. If you have two alcohol that they have, each one has one OH, but one has greater mass than the other, the alcohol with greater mass is going to have stronger intermolecular forces and intermolecular forces that the alcohol with the higher mass shows actually is the hydrogen bonding plus the van der Waals forces or the London dispersion forces. So you have the, uh, you have the, the both of them adding up together and it makes the molecule to have a stronger intermolecular force. So what are intermolecular forces? How do they uh, affect the molecule? Intermolecular forces, how does it affect the molecule? Okay, if the molecule is polar, okay, if there is a polar bond in the molecule, so I guess before you ask answer my question, I'm going to answer your question. So in order to find out if your compound has a dipole dipole or not, you have to see if your molecule is polar or not. Now, what type of molecules are polar? It's the compound that they have uneven distribution of electrons. Let's say you have a compound that is made of only carbon and hydrogen. Carbon and hydrogen, they have it's very similar, 2.1 electronegativity for carbon and hydrogen. So if you have a hydrocarbon of, let's say, propane that is made only of carbon and hydrogen, there is no difference in electronegativity, and your molecule is very, um, the distribution of electron is even. So your molecule doesn't have a positive head um, versus negative tail or vice versa. But if you have a compound, that has, let's say you have that same molecule that has carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, where oxygen is, because oxygen holds electrons stronger, is going to uh, have more electron around the oxygen. So the side of the molecule that has oxygen is going to have a higher density of electrons compared to the other side of the molecule. So that shows uneven distribution of electrons. When you have uneven distribution of electrons, then you have 
uh, you have the um, polarity. Your molecule behaves like you know polar, and there is a dipole dipole. Dipole dipole. So if your one molecule uh, molecule has a positive head and negative, the positive side of one molecule is going to attract the negative side of the neighboring molecule, and that attraction is kind of permanent because your molecule is always polar, based on the structure. To determine that's the that's like a whole chapter. How would you determine that your molecule is, has dipole dipole? You need to know the structure of the molecule. And then based on the central atom, if you see the electron distribution around the central atom is even, then overall your molecule would be nonpolar. You can determine that based on the VSPR. Or you can determine that based on hybridization. So if you know that you have your central atom has four bonds, if all four bonds are exactly the same, your molecule is going to be nonpolar. Let's say you have a carbon that is attached to four hydrogen, then it's nonpolar. But if one of the bonds is different, one of them is uh, OH, then your molecule is going to be polar. You have three bonds that is attached to hydrogen and one is OH or oxygen, then the molecule is going to be polar. So it depends on the structure of the molecule. So when you have the structure of the molecule, you can determine your molecule is polar or not, but it's coming from difference in electronegativity between the, um, the atoms of the molecule and the distribution of it also. So how does uh, intermolecular forces affect the behavior of a molecule? What is electro, elect, uh, I'm sorry, um, intermolecular forces responsible for? I guess I gave the answer in different question. Affects the freezing point. Affect the boiling point, melting point. Okay. Any physical property. Physical property of the compound, it, it's uh, due to the, the intermolecular forces. So basically solubility. And other physical property, like you said, boiling point, melting point, all of that is affected by intermolecular forces. When you say like dissolves like, that means if you have two compounds that they have same intermolecular forces, both of them, they have hydrogen bonding, they can communicate with each other or they can dissolve. One can dissolve another one. But if you have polar versus a nonpolar, one that has hydrogen bonding, another compound that has only Van der Waals forces is not going to dissolve. The stronger the intermolecular forces, the higher the boiling point, higher the, the viscosity, the higher the osmotic pressure. Um, so except with the rate of evaporation, Rate of evaporation, it comes with lower boiling point. If the compound has weaker intermolecular force, it's going to have, um, it's going to evaporate faster or is going to have lower rate of evaporation. I'm sorry, great, if, if it's going to evaporate faster, so it takes less energy to evaporate for weaker intermolecular forces. So if, if a structure of a two uh, compound is given to you and you want to see, you want to predict how fast this is going to evaporate, you have to look for the one that has lower or weaker intermolecular forces. So basically you can predict the rate of evaporation. And that's what this experiment is about. So first we talk about the intermolecular forces. Then we are going to compare uh, these six compounds and see which one is going to evaporate uh, faster. Okay, uh, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. Between one propanol and one butanol, which one is going to evaporate faster? Propanol or 
butanol. Oh, about the experiment 13, if the prelab is not there, I will upload it. It's supposed to be there. If it's not there, I will upload it. No problem. Okay, one butanol and uh, one propanol. Which one would evaporate faster? Propanol would evaporate faster because propanol has three uh, carbon, is a three carbon alcohol. Butanol is a four carbon alcohol. So you have a couple of, you know, uh, ways to answer the question, find the molar mass, but know that both of them are alcohol. So both of them, they have hydrogen bonding. But the compound, that's what I said, factors that affects compounds with hydrogen bonding. If the compound has hydrogen bonding and at the same time has higher mass, it's going to have stronger intermolecular forces because you're adding the van der Waals forces as well. Okay. So you have um, between hexane and ethanol. Which one is going to evaporate faster? N-hexane. Hexane is only carbon and hydrogen. It's six carbon and only hydrogens. And ethanol is two carbon alcohol. Which one is going to evaporate faster? Hexane or... ethanol or methanol, okay. that point you are going to compare the type of intermolecular forces. The compound with greater intermolecular force or stronger intermolecular force is going to have higher boiling point. So ethanol is going to have a stronger intermolecular force, so it's going to have higher boiling point. If it has higher boiling point, it's not going to evaporate fast. So between hexane and ethanol is going to be, um, hexane is going to evaporate faster. So you have to pay attention to the question, which one has higher boiling point? It would be ethanol. Which one is going to evaporate faster? It would be hexane. For the comparison, we are not going to compare actually in practice. We basically, when you do the experiment, you compare the hexane with pentane. Pentane has five carbon, but hexane has six carbon. The structure, if you look at the, when you watch the video, uh, the background on the background on the board, you have the structure and the molecular mass for the uh, for these compounds. That makes it, you know, easier for you to look at it to to take it from there, or when you um, search for these, you can search on uh, the structure formula for all the just six compounds. Search for structure of the formula for each one. You write the molar mass and you you record the the you draw the structure. Then you could see that if it's just carbon and hydrogen, it's nonpolar. If it has OH, it's going to be polar. So you are going to compare the hexane with hep with the pentane and methanol, ethanol, propanol, and butanol together. And look, draw the, the graph based on um, rate of evaporation. The faster the rate of evaporation, the greater the change in temperature. So the temperature is going to be recorded. This prediction, like the, the greater change in, um, the, the faster is going to evaporate, the delta T value is going to be greater. So if you have the first two between going from ethanol to propanol, if you have these numbers, then you can predict this. And you can explain that like ethanol with two carbon, propanol with three carbon, and butanol with four carbon. So the trend is going to continue. Okay, questions for me. Uh, I will check the experiment 13 pre-lab now to make sure that uh, I add the pre-lab 13, if it's not there.
So you have a document for pre-lab 13? Okay, perfect. Um, that's under the assignment. Okay. So when you open the assignment, you, it's attachment. I, I will check it. I will check and let you know. When we have, um, so we have experiment 13 next week and you have your final exam on the um, 13th and then the 20th. You have your final exam on April 20th. Uh, today, April 6th, you have experiment 12. April 13th, you have experiment 13. And then April 20th, you have your exam. The final exam, you get uh, questions from pre-lab or data sheet of the experiment. The, to study for final exam, you have to review the, the uh, pre-lab and the data sheet okay. and the experiments. And next week, I will either have a document for you, you know, the type of questions, or I will have a discussion in the lab. Um, reflection, what do you mean of re reflection? Oh, re reflection, okay. Reflection is, it. if you open that assignment, it explains what you need to write. Is extra credit, I believe, or no credit assignments that it's like, it's like a student's feedback of the class, basically. Okay. I said a couple of times that I'm going to check for you, and I forgot. Let me check the experiment 13, just to make sure. You're right, there is no assignment for the pre-lab. Unless I post it in different place. Okay, I just added, I just added the assignment. I just added to the assignment, the extension for that, the, uh, the attachment. And um, what about the data sheet? Data sheet is okay? Yes, data sheet is okay. Okay, the module is under the, uh, I added to the assignment, so it will stay there. Um, I'm glad that you found it there. But uh, 
apparently instead of going inside the assignment, I put it in the module, but I have it now in the assignment. So every time you open the assignment, it will be there. It's going to be half multiple choice and half free response, like short answers, multiple choice and short answers. As I said, you will have either a document, announcement, document, or a um, discussions about the exam next week. Any other questions? No questions? OK, I'm going to stop the uh, recording. About 20 to 25 questions. Sure.